real happy valley, Hebden Bridge, Yorkshire. Once known as Trouser Town or the real happy valley, the picturesque English settlement of Hebden Bridge is a centre of independent freedom. Set in the Calderdale district of West Yorkshire, England, this striking town has become famous as the birthplace of Ed Sheeran, the setting for BBC's hit series Happy Valley, and a thriving area for fair trade goods and artisan shops, bars and restaurants. With a weekend to spare and a curiosity to visit the place once dubbed one of the quirkiest in the world, we grabbed our raincoats and braved the steep winding roads of the Calderdale Valley to explore Hebden Bridge. Hello and welcome to The Wanderlust Way. In today's video, we'll be sharing our weekend trip to Hebden Bridge, a colourful market town in the Calderdale district of West Yorkshire, England. Filmed on a typically English rainy autumn day, we spent just over 24 hours exploring and recording its charming streets, independent bars and must-visit hotspots. Stepping through its award-winning market and soaking up the cultural diversity on offer, in this video we'll give a brief history of certain highlights and discover what exactly it is that attracts so many artists, musicians and bohemians even today. So please sit back, relax and enjoy the video. If you do enjoy it, I'd really appreciate a like and please subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. Thank you. The first thing that may strike you as you enter down from the valley roads is the amount of hustle and bustle contained within such a small area. Although it was a Saturday in a popular market town, I was unrealistically under the expectation that the lashings of rain bouncing off the pavements would mean less crowds today. But by 11am and having driven around every car park in town, we soon realised that was not the case. A downpour of rain was not to prevent the visitors of Hebden Bridge, each one choosing its charm over the typical English Yorkshire weather. I took it as a good sign, it meant this place was worth getting soggy socks for. After a few goes around the block, we managed to secure a car parking space outside a row of interestingly historic buildings. A quick spin of our heads allowed us to take in our first glimpse of diversity in the town. On this street alone, we were bewitched by a variety of establishments, where vegan restaurants and witchy paraphernalia shops sat in balanced harmony aside traditional bakeries and trendy bars. Hebden Bridge has built an enviable reputation for great little shops. It's one of the reasons it snatched up the prestigious Great British High Street Award back in 2016. Its streets are awash with independence. You won't find a B&M or a Greggs here. Instead, there is a splattering of unique clothing boutiques, artisan gift shops and vintage offerings. This unique mix represents a stark contrast to the usual high street offerings found in the neighbouring cities of Halifax, Huddersfield or Bradford. Perhaps it's one of the reasons British Airways High Life magazine once described Hebden Bridge as being modern and stylish in an unconventional and stylish way. In the 90s, Hebden Bridge became a popular commuter town for people working in some of the major towns of Manchester, Bradford and Leeds. Its handy railway links and small town charm saw the city professionals arrive and lay stake on its property market. With that came an influx of new money and a boost to the local economy. But things haven't always been plain sailing for the folk of Hebden Bridge, and to understand why, we have to take a step back in history. Close to the Pennine Way and amongst an area of outstanding natural beauty, the original settlement here was the hilltop village of Heptonstall, which we will visit later on in this video. A farming community dates back to at least the time of the Saxons, but things really picked up the pace here with the beginning of industrialisation. Steep hills and fast-flowing streams made this area ideal for water-powered weaving mills. Because of this, manufacturing thrived as early as the 15th century. There are many nods to its historical past you can visit, with one of the oldest being the Old Bridge and the Hebden Bridge Mill. The town lies at the junction of Hebden Water and the River Calder. The crossing here was initially a ford, but in 1477 records suggest a wooden bridge crossed the river. Eventually this was replaced by the Pack Horse Bridge built in 1510 and known as Old Bridge. Today it is a Grade 2 listed with a plaque to educate visitors. 
Whilst you stand and watch the ducks peacefully waddling in the water's edge, you may find it hard to imagine that in 1643 and during the English Civil War, a battle took place on this very spot. We of course visited the bridge and admired the views of the water below. It didn't seem to bother the ducks much that the rain was pelting down on us all. From here we walked towards another important bridge in the town, the St George's Bridge, which lies in proud place next to the town hall, home of the council offices. With the growth of the town during the Industrial Revolution, it soon became apparent that a new, bigger, more wider bridge was required to service the town. And so the St George's Bridge was created, with red and white cast iron sides and a stone block boasting the year 1892 neatly carved into it. After all this outdoor exploring, it was time to head back towards the car and towards our overnight lodging. But first, we must pass the Hebden Bridge Mill. Beside the old bridge and proudly sitting at the centre of town for over 700 years is one of the oldest buildings in the country. A solid stone reminder of former industry stands the Hebden Bridge Mill. Originally a medieval corn mill, the building would have consisted of timber and thatch. A later extension and rebuild into stone seems more consistent with what we see today. By 1871 the building had become a steam-powered cotton spinning mill with a notable chimney. It was an important feature in this busy industrial time. In this moment of glory, Hebden Bridge became an important centre for garment making and in its heyday would see the production of up to one million pairs of trousers a year. It affectionately became dubbed Trouser Town for its sensational production of corduroy. Today, a fustian knife sculpture in St George's Square acts as both sundial and commemorative nod to its manufacturing peak. Sadly, with the decline of industry and depletion of the town, we'll cover the derelict times later, the Hebden Bridge Mill became abandoned in 1956 and left to ruin. Thankfully, in 1972, its current owners purchased the mill in order to save it from demolition. Today, now fully restored, it offers visitors a shop, cafe and bar, with a focus on ethically sourced goods and locally sourced food. How important do you think it is to prevent demolition of old buildings like this? Let me know in the comments. By this point, with rain-soaked clothing and bedraggled hair, we made our way by car to the Robin Hood Inn at nearby Peckett Well, which would serve as our lodging for the evening. The Robin Hood Inn is a 17th century coaching inn that is set in the small hilltop village of Peckett Well, just short of two miles from Hebden Bridge Town Centre. It was a perfectly cosy and welcoming pub, which offered three bedrooms for those that wished to stay. We booked our break through Red Letter Days on a dinner bed and breakfast deal, and it nicely exceeded our expectations. The staff were incredibly pleasant, the food delicious and the surroundings peaceful. The Robin Hood Inn does also hold a few secrets from the past, which I've shared in another video over on my channel. You can find it by visiting the main page. After a couple of swift pints, Aidy sampling one of their guest ales whilst I enjoyed a grapefruit beer, we called for a taxi, which promptly arrived to take us back into town for the afternoon. Philosophers might describe the history of Hebden Bridge as being symbolically parallel with the peaks and valleys of its natural surroundings. For after the pinnacle success of its manufacturing glory, the movement of production overseas meant the town began to sink into a pit of despair. As its industry peaked in the early 1890s, Hebden Bridge and its residents saw a slow decline until the 1950s and 60s, when it was almost obliterated over a 10-year time frame. With 35 factories closed, the people left town to seek work elsewhere, leaving a ghost town of abandoned homes and desolate streets. Eventually, by the 1970s and 1980s, the town started to see an interesting turn of events, with a new community of people beginning to take shape in the area. The decline began to attract squatters, most of which embraced a bohemian lifestyle. With this came an influx of hippies, who were attracted by the low property prices and beautiful countryside. Eventually, more young people, suffering city burnout, found Hebden Bridge the perfect place to embrace an alternative way of living. The movement of the hippies no doubt helped create the charm of the town we see today. 
Often named one of the quirkiest towns in the world, its relaxed and vibrant atmosphere sees a continued stream of artists, writers, photographers and musicians. What attracts you mostly to a town? Do you prefer a well-established high street, a familiar shops, or a place that's wish-washed with only independent offerings? Let me know in the comments. With the taxi dropping us off close to the picture house, we took a few moments to admire the building. The Hebden Bridge Picture House is one of the last remaining council-owned cinemas in Britain, built between 1919 and 1921. It is a Grade 2 listed building that houses one screen and over 500 seats. Its website explains that it is a thriving, independent and not-for-profit cinema, proud to participate in the town's many festivals, including the Hebden Bridge Film Festival, the Hebden Bridge Arts Festival and the Happy Valley Pride. Step into the picture house and you may be delighted to hear they serve tea in proper mugs and sell locally baked cakes. You can have a glass of wine or beer at your seat too. I mean, does life get any better than this? I don't think it does. Crossing the road and in a desperate attempt to escape the rain, we stumbled inside one of the town's antique shops. A labyrinth of artefacts and treasures from days long past. It wasn't long before we ventured across a fantastic collection of stuffed animals, china dolls and nightmarish looking clowns. It was the perfect escape from the showers outside, and we could have spent a little longer admiring their Star Wars collection, but the desire to try out one of the town's independent watering holes was gripping us. And so we paid for the Queen's Best Hits record we discovered amongst the vinyl collection and headed towards the market area. It's worth noting at this point that there was a bus shelter directly opposite the antique shop. I'm letting you know this because it confirms the rumour that they have a very good transport system. And it's also an option if you need a break from the rain when the antique shop is closed. Winner of Britain's Best Small Open Market in 2016 and located around Old Lee's Yard off St George's Square, you can find this bustling retail paradise. I'm a fan of outdoor markets when they're good and this one did not disappoint. With around 36 stalls of incredible offerings, it's no wonder Hebden Bridge has become notorious for its market community. Origins of a market here date back to 1835 when the sale of horses and pigs would take place. Today it trades four days a week spanning Thursday to Sunday from the hours of 9am to 4pm. Each day promotes different products. A schedule for this can be found on their website. I would tell you, but it might change and I would hate to disappoint you, so instead I'll drop a link below. As it was a Saturday, we saw a selection of arts and crafts. We made a decision to visit again the following day, as we'd heard Sunday focused on local produce, and we kind of like local produce. So instead, we opted to sit in the window of a wine merchant opposite, watching the rest of the market goers enjoy their afternoon shopping whilst we enjoyed a glass of vino from the warmth of the bar. You're doing that when they bring wine to the table and you just go, yes. Mm, yes, acceptable. Directly opposite the market square, you can find the Remedy Wine Merchant, a small independent place that houses an impressive collection of wines from across the globe. Trendy surroundings include bar-style seats that edge the building's large windows and provide a frame into the world outside. After perusing through their menu and pretending we knew what we were talking about, we opted for one of the popular wine flights. Because to be honest, that's what the majority of folk were doing. And we gave in to FOMO. The wine flight was a selection of three wines from a detailed list, served on a board with a simple but enjoyable description of each offering. It was an excuse to indulge whilst being educated. Every day's a school day, after all. As the afternoon was beginning to come to a close, we ventured across towards town to a number of other establishments. A spontaneous lunch involved hand-stretched pizza, followed by another glass of wine in a bar that was once a bank. After all this, we were conscious of our dinner reservation back at the hotel and so headed to the taxi rank. But before that, we had to make one last stop to the one bar that featured at the top of our must-visit list. Have you visited any of the bars or restaurants in Hebden Bridge? 
drop your recommendations in the comments below. Born in 2015, the Vocation Brewery employs around 100 people, brews over 10 million pints a year and is sold in around 40 countries worldwide. Although it has bars dotted around the north, the one here in Hebden Bridge is the mothership because it's here that the humble beginnings of Vocation began and this was the first bar that they ever opened. Open daily from noon, we walked into a packed but very friendly environment which had everything you can expect from a trendy craft beer place. Filled with friends catching up over a Saturday afternoon pint and couples like ourselves hitched together in cosy nooks, some straight from their countryside walk. I figured this out by the wet dog sleeping lazily by their ankles. It was a really cool vibe if that's your sort of thing. Luckily, the taxi rank was located just opposite the Vocation Brewery, and so we left the hubbub of there and headed back to Peckett Well. The following morning, with a full itinerary in hand, we checked out of the Robin Hood Inn. As we said our goodbyes, a lovely lady hoovering the breakfast room asked whether we'd come to visit the area to see the Happy Valley filming locations. She explained they get a lot of tourists coming for that, I said it was definitely on the list, and if you're wondering the same, then we'll get to that by the end of this video, I promise. As we carried our bags back to the car and checked the Met Office weather app, we soon realised that the rain was here to stay. In fact, today, it could be even wetter. And so, we voted to prioritise the must-do and abandon the rest of the list for next summer. But one thing we couldn't miss was a stop off at the childhood home of one of Hebden Bridge's most famous inhabitants. Fans of music may be interested to hear that the global superstar Ed Sheeran spent his early childhood years here in Hebden Bridge. Could it be on these very streets that at six years old he broke his leg whilst running from his brother and his friends? I don't know, but what I do know is that Ed's father worked as a curator at Cartwright Hall in Bradford and his mother worked in a Manchester City art gallery. And they all lived here, in the large house on Birchcliff Road that looks over the town with its many windows. As I stood there with my camera, I could almost imagine young Ed looking out from his room above, dreaming of a day when, together with his music, he might just make it big. I didn't stop long staring at Ed's old house, mindful that the current owners were perhaps wanting to enjoy their Sunday morning in privacy. Not too far from Ed's pad, you can find one of Yorkshire's best kept secrets. For set atop the hillside above Hebden Bridge is the ancient village of Heptonstall. Known as one of the most historic villages in Yorkshire, it boasts picture-perfect cobble streets amongst the backdrop of dark millstone cottages. Here you can find a small number of touristy spots, including the village museum. But the main reason holidaymakers visit Hepton Stall is usually for the churches. Behind the cobbled main street, you can find the shell of an old parish church. The church was erected between 1256 and 1260 and dedicated to Thomas Becket, who was murdered in 1170 on the orders of the first Plantagenet King, Henry II. One can imagine it was an incredibly impressive structure, but unfortunately it was badly damaged in the Great Storm of 1847. A new church was consecrated instead during October 1854 and became dedicated to St Thomas the Apostle. A graveyard here contains over 10,000 bodies, many whom were victims of the plague of 1631. A new churchyard was therefore created just a few steps away and is famous for being the eternal resting place of American poet Sylvia Plath. Plath married follow poet Ted Hughes, who had strong links with Hebden Bridge, including a poem he wrote that was supposedly constructed from the Stubbing Wharf pub by the water's edge in town. Fans of Sylvia and her work will know she suffered greatly with her mental health, and it was on the 11th of February 1963 that she committed suicide by gassing herself. Sylvia was just 30 years old at the time, but had made previous attempts at suicide. She now lays in this part of the cemetery, but unfortunately, with the overgrown grasses and persistent downpour, we were unable to find her this time. I will try again when I return to the area next. Lastly, we will move on to what many British people know Hebden Bridge for, 
Whilst we stand in this cemetery, fans of the BBC crime drama Happy Valley may recognise the scene from many of the show's graveside shots where lead actor Sarah Lancashire visits the area to tend to her daughter's grave. The hit programme began its first series in 2014 and its final third series in 2023. A high proportion of the scenes are filmed here in Hebden Bridge, the surrounding areas and the Hepton Stall graveyard we stand in today. The show's storyline centres around Sergeant Catherine Kaywood and her murdering psychopath arch-nemesis Tommy Lee Royce. It's a drama that had a lot of the nation gripped and fans will be able to locate various places in the town on a visit here, including some of the shops and the canal where Tommy Lee Royce pours petrol on his only son. But locals tell me that most people want to see the home that Catherine shares with her sister in the show. If you plan a visit and want to see the house for yourself, then simply head to Hanging Royd Lane and Cleveland Place. My suggestion would be to park in town and go through on foot, as it was very busy and difficult to park up near the street. It's also important to be mindful that the home is occupied by real people, and so they probably wouldn't appreciate it if you start taking photos through their windows. And that's the reason you won't see any photos of it here on this video. Did you watch Happy Valley? Were you a fan? Let me know in the comments. All in all, Hebden Bridge certainly has a lot to offer for a weekend break, and I hope to return in the future, on a brighter day perhaps. If you have a story of Hebden Bridge or wish to share memories of a trip you've made there, we'd love to hear it. Please drop it down in the comments or contact us on social media. Thanks for watching.